Hello and welcome to People's Voice, where true stories touch deep emotions. Today, we delve into, I heavily regrets, turning down marriage to a good guy over a career. Come, let's explore these real-life stories. I am 25, female, now, and if I could go back again, I would have married my ex fiance when I had the chance. But instead, I chose a career over him, and it destroyed our relationship. In 2018, I graduated from college and got engaged to my college sweetheart. He wanted to get married and start a family, but I wanted us to wait and give it some time. It's not like I didn't love him, I did, but I wanted an opportunity to use my degree, which I had spent years earning. His plan was for me to be a stay-at-home mom while he worked, but I wanted to make a name for myself in the corporate world. Our vision did not align, so I wanted us to hold off on marriage. When he attempted to schedule a firm date for the wedding, I told him that maybe in two years, we could revisit that. I had already secured a job before I graduated, and the position required me to travel often, three days out of the week. It was a grueling and lonely job, lots of money but lonely. I was good at it, I was passionate about my job, and my clients loved me. I took my engagement ring off when I was traveling because clients always acted differently when they saw it. My fiancé would complain about it, but I had this mindset that if he was working on his career, why couldn't I do the same? My constant traveling was creating friction in the relationship, and I wasn't going to let him win. We started growing distant. I knew what I had to do to fix the relationship. To do that, I had to stop traveling all the time for work, but for some reason, I was too stubborn to let him win. I was around 22 years old back then, having meetings with grown-ups, doing business, and making a lot of money for my company. I was getting all the satisfaction I had dreamed of, but I was still lonely when I was at the hotel at the end of the day, feeling alone and wanting to call my fiancé. I would hesitate. If I called him, we would end up arguing because of my work schedule. One evening, I was having one of those lonely days at the hotel when I decided to go downstairs to the bar. When I was downstairs, drinking a cocktail, a client I had met earlier in the day approached me. He was older, in his mid-thirties. I remember having a crush on him but had brushed it aside. We sat opposite each other and started talking about our work. He travels for work as well, although not as frequently as I do. He asked me what a beautiful woman like me was doing traveling around the country so often, and why my boyfriend would allow me to do that. I remember being triggered by the fact that he thought I needed permission from a man. I responded that I didn't need his permission to do what I wanted to do. He said, oh, then there is a he in the picture? I said, yes, but it is complicated. I asked about his relationship status. He said, I used to have a girlfriend, but I don't anymore. I came home one day and caught her being unfaithful. I felt sad for him. Oh, sorry about that. He brushed it off, oh, it's fine. I'm over it. Life is short. Besides, I want you. I was impressed by his directness. I really liked him. I said, I like you too, but let me set things straight with the person I'm talking to, and then we can see about us. He seemed pleased to hear that, but things went off the rails that night when he invited me to his room. I hesitated, but I had been drinking. We ended up in his bed in a hotel room. I had drunk too much that night, and that made the decision easier. I had one more day to stay in town, and I spent it in his arms. When I got home to my fiancé, things got worse. We were arguing a lot, and the chemistry was no longer there. I was in love with another man. I decided to break off our engagement. He was shocked, but I told him not to act surprised because he must have seen it coming. We had been growing distant for a while. After breaking up with my fiancé, he called my family, and my parents tried to convince me to go back to him, but I had already made up my mind after ending things with my fiancé. Things became easier between me and the new guy, no more hiding. He lived in a different city, but he had no problem coming to visit me. He didn't take up much of my time and wasn't as demanding as my ex-fiancé. I was busy, and he was busy, so it worked well for us. We had a lot of fun and many good times. When he left, the vibe continued as it had in the beginning. We talked on the phone from dawn to dusk. We were so in love. 
We even made plans to spend Christmas together. Everything went as planned, and I spent Christmas with him. Christmas and newfound love made the season magical, and I felt every bit of the magic. It was too good to be true. You know what they say, if it's too good to be true, then it probably is. One night, we met in the same town, like nomads. We ended up in the same hotel as planned. Our relationship was getting deeper and deeper, and I wanted to know more about him. When he fell asleep before I did and I saw his phone lying beside him, my curiosity got the best of me. I went through his phone, and nothing could have prepared me for what I found. The man I had fallen head over heels for and broken off my engagement for was dating three other women besides me. I woke him up and confronted him. When we met, you said you didn't have a girlfriend, so who are these three other ladies? Why did you lie to me? He couldn't talk, he just knelt down and cried, as if I had just told him his mother had died. He held my legs. I'm sorry, baby, please forgive me. I will make things right. I will break it off with all of them. I should have walked away from him that very night, but I loved him. The next morning, I left and booked another hotel. I couldn't stand to be around his lying face. I ignored his calls and texts. I needed space to process what I had found out. He said he would break up with them, and I believed him, but it didn't change the fact that he had lied to me and played me. He sent texts saying, You are not being fair to me. I told you I'd break it off with them, but you don't believe me. It was hard, but I stayed away from him until I couldn't anymore. My job involves a lot of traveling, so I ended up going to his town again, it must be fate. I went to see him, and let's just say, his power of persuasion was really good. I was in town for business but had a lot of pleasure as well. All was forgiven, and we were back together. When it was time for me to leave, he said, Evelyn, I will miss you. I told him, I will miss you too. I had truly forgiven him, and we were back on track. This happened in March 2020, the same month the country recorded its first virus case, and some parts were on lockdown. My state wasn't affected by the lockdown, but my company introduced a shift system to reduce the number of people in the workspace at a given time. Traveling was grounded, and I was meeting all my clients on Zoom. That month, I missed my period. Initially, I wasn't concerned because I had an irregular cycle. Three days later, it was still not in. Just to be sure, I bought a pregnancy test kit. I took the test, and it was positive. I took a picture of the test strip and sent it to him, but he didn't respond. I called him, and he answered, Did you see the photo I sent to you? He said, Yes, I have seen it. What are we going to do then? I asked. He answered, I think you should have the baby. I wanted to have the baby too. I recall the conversation we had in the past. I told him that if I got pregnant, I would want to get married. He agreed to marry me and said he wanted us to keep it, and I realized that's exactly what he was doing. If I ever doubted that he had changed, then this was a confirmation that he was no longer in the business of lying to me. I wasn't ready, but I felt calm knowing he would support me. The next day, he called me, sounding like a completely different person. I'm not ready to be a father yet, and I'm not ready to take our relationship to the next level, he said. A lot of things he said made me lose hope in our relationship. I cried continuously. I didn't want to terminate the pregnancy, and I never planned to be a single mother. The stress and disappointment caused me to fall sick. I was admitted to the hospital, and this man came to visit. When he arrived, all he kept saying was, since you're already at the hospital, let's just go ahead and end the pregnancy. It will be best that way. I told him I wouldn't do it. I called my father, who lived in a different city from where I lived, and he came. My father asked him what his intentions were, and he changed his story. He said he didn't want to marry me until after I gave birth. So, I'll wait until she delivers the baby, then we would get married. Due to the stress, I decided to quit my traveling job for something that required less traveling. A few weeks later, my now boyfriend came with his sister to meet my dad and my uncle officially. He said his mother wasn't well, so they couldn't bring her along. My folks were very understanding, they didn't give them a hard time. 
Everything went smoothly from there, and I was sure we would get married after the baby was born. The first time he met my mother, she was concerned about the age difference. She asked him, apart from my daughter, is there any other woman in your life? He responded, no, ma'am, she is the only one I have. He and my mother got close, and they even called each other from time to time. When I gave birth, he came to spend some time with us. We did the naming ceremony on February 20, 2021. When I broached the topic of marriage, he said he didn't want to get married. We could be in a committed relationship, but no marriage. He said he had made the mistake of marrying someone in the past, and it didn't work out, so he wouldn't get married again. I couldn't believe him. I reported the issue to my mother. When my mother asked him if I had offended him, he said I hadn't. This same person, on the day of the naming ceremony of my child, assured my family that he would marry me. So, how was he now telling me that he didn't intend to get married? Once a liar, always a liar. After that conversation, he changed. He didn't even bother to hide his lies anymore, they were so blatant. One time, I called him on a video call, and he told me he was going to work. After the call ended, I saw on his Snapchat that he was in my town around that same time. I called him back immediately and asked, where are you? He said, I'm at work, like I told you. I called him out on his lies, and he responded with, forget you. If I'm in town, it doesn't concern you. The person I'm interested in seeing is my daughter, not you. If you want to live longer, mind your business, witch. Ah, how did I become a witch? It was like watching a plane crash, one moment everything is fine, and the next moment everything is falling apart, and there's nothing to do to stop it. I called his sister to tell her what he did and how he behaved. She was shocked. She asked, so if he is not with you, then who is he with? I cried as I told her, your brother has changed, and I don't know why he's treating me this way. She tried her best to comfort me. Later that evening, he came to my apartment and pretended as if he hadn't insulted me in the morning. He continued behaving poorly towards me. He even asked that I pack our things so we could go visit his mother one Saturday. He said his mother wasn't doing well. We were supposed to go on a Saturday, but he didn't show up. He didn't answer his calls either. He came that evening and behaved so badly towards me. I even started having anxiety attacks. Nothing he did made sense, the change in his behavior was all too sudden. My mom decided that we should go visit his mother without him and tell her how he has been acting lately. I called to inform his sister about our plans. That was when he started calling me. I didn't pick up. When we got to their place, his sister and brother picked us up and took us to the house. It was my first time meeting his mother. She received us warmly and asked about our mission. My mother and I told her about our relationship with her son. She looked so pained while we narrated our story. When we finished, she said, it appears you don't know that my son is married. He is married and he lives with his wife. When she said this, I couldn't even see, I was blinded by tears. I turned to his sister and asked, your brother is married, and you knew about it? When did this happen? She couldn't talk. I was inconsolable. We went back to the hotel. I couldn't sleep, not after what I discovered. I went to Instagram to distract myself from my heartache. That was when I saw his wedding photos. He got married on the Saturday he asked me to pack my things so we could go visit his mother. What did I ever do to him? Long story short, I learned his wife had a baby in July 2021, meanwhile, he got married to her in March. So, she was pregnant at the time. What he told my family, that he couldn't marry me while I was pregnant, was another lie. I thought he loved me, but it turns out I was just a good time for him. It hurts, it hurts so much. Because of him, I left the man that I was supposed to marry, and the career I picked over him was not as glamorous as I thought. He should be now. My life is ruined. I'm scared of this journey of a single mother. I look on Instagram, and my ex fiance has already married another woman with two kids, that should have been me. This is not how I planned for my life to go.
What if I never find someone to love me? I'm ashamed to tell people that I have a baby, seeing as I'm not married. I'm thankful for my family and my bosses at work, they've been a strong support system. I have lost confidence in myself, and I am afraid of what the future holds. I saw all the signs, but I didn't walk away, and now I'm ruined. If you love this story, and crave more tales of love, betrayal, and healing, don't forget to subscribe for more from Cheating Stories.